glad you have you back. Or if you're new, thanks for stopping by. And uh, hopefully you stick around for other videos coming up. Many of you well know we've been working on pivots lately. Late, lately and uh, that's not changing today. Um, we was, I was talking to my brother Tom this morning and that's kind of our main focus right now is getting all the pivots ready to go just in case if we don't get any moisture before uh, planting season or even just uh, starting to work the ground on some of these things just so they're ready to rock and roll because if we don't get much moisture we're gonna have to start running those and uh, hopefully hopefully get a get a little moisture in the ground so what I'm doing right now is I'm heading out to a field my brother said uh, he was out filling some pivot tracks the other day and he mentioned on one of my pivots that there was a flat tire on it so I'm heading out there to check out what size it was because he didn't remember if it was a it's a short tire but it couldn't remember if it was a truck tire or if it was a regular uh, pivot tire which I'll maybe show you here in a little bit so I'm going to check it out, head back to our stash, pick one up, swap them out. Or actually, I might just take this off, drop it off, and then get another one and put it back on. So we'll see how it goes. Let's start this thing. So right now, it's... Uh, it's about 45 degrees weather ain't too bad it is cloudy though that they're calling for rain some rain so hopefully we get some but as we've gotten closer to it it's been getting slimmer so I hope I just hope we get some of course the cattle guys wouldn't unhook the fence that they put up This pivot here is an older Lockwood pivot. Um, they actually uh, don't make these anymore, but there's still quite a there's still a handful of them in the, the area. You can kind of tell by the different designs. Uh, the way you can kind of tell it's a Lockwood for the electric pivots is these brackets on the end are kind of known on a T and L, but for the electric ones. Lockwood kind of designed that like that and then kind of the short downfalls of Lockwoods were maybe the electrical systems on them like the alignment boxes but this has been updated to convert it over to a Ranky system which I'll show you here in a little bit because this end tower has the old end tower box but see as you can see there that alignment box on top of the tower which keeps the pivot in line that's actually from a Ranky system. It's been retrofitted there. That has the two arms that go out. And so it updated that on this. But we're looking for a flat tire. I think she's flat. So sometimes people ask me about my toolbox setup in the back of my pickup, but we have a landlord that I always liked the idea of having it swing in and out, and he actually made his at home. So I was gonna maybe try to build one, but I was going along on the internet and I found an outfit out of Kansas that makes these swing arms. And I thought, you know, instead of me taking a bunch of time to try to build that, uh, I got that one and put it, put it in. And I've actually had it since 2013, I believe. And I just keep changing it with the pickups I get. This one over here is nothing fancy. It's just a swing away as well, but that's kind of what I keep my power tools in just to kind of keep it separate. 
That one there is off my old four-wheeler that I got to take off the back and kind of transfer stuff over to my new four-wheeler. So yeah, stuff like that I got to get done. But no, that's how that works. It's just a swing away arm. It, I, I believe it's, uh, is it? It was like Kits Manufacturing or something like that. I think you can Google it. But it was out of Pratt, Kansas. So if you're ever looking for something like that, maybe check them out. Actually, I might run through the rest of these towers to see what I might need to bring out. If there's anything else that's changed over the course. So you see this mound right here that kind of builds up where these tires were? Well, before... This one's got tall tires now. But when it had the short tires, those short tires weren't able to climb over the silt right here that's built up. And it would just keep shoving it in a pile up here until I put these tall tires on. It tends to do that on some of these first towers. And I don't know if it's because it's got a sharper turn or what, but. But that's something those tall tires will do a better job of is they can come climb over that stuff and shove it out of the tracks better than those shorter tires will tend to push it further and it's kind of a double whammy on some of those. So I'm gonna take this to the local co-op, let them either fix it or, or put a new tire on it. And then I'll go, if they got right on it, I might wait, but I'll probably end up going to our shed and uh, picking up a new one and just taking it back out here so I don't have to take up more time. It's kind of breezy out there today though, a little chilly. It gets underneath my skirt. I think I'm gonna want that one. All right. wire holders there. shop here a little bit today something we got to do for our older planner that we traded in is my brother didn't take off his uh, power harness for his clean sweeps which on our other planner it's the air precision air system that we had on our other one it's got its own little compressor we did not have a pure deer system on it so I'm just taking off basically this power harness that goes on here but it goes back up underneath there and we plug it into a power source behind this plate with that slow moving sign on it so i'm going to take that off real quick just so uh you know its new owner can have it if i remember right it's like a weird size i don't think it's like a normal size it's a 14.
For some reason, that guy's sticky. I think I'll just cut it out of there. Just kidding, I'd be killed. Got it. That was sticky icky. Ooh If you're wondering what this guy was in the background here, um, this is an auto batching system for our tender sprayer. And how we're gonna use it is this will go on our um, spray tender trailer. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna have three of these meters. We, we only needed three, or we think we only needed three at this time. But you can turn these on. And what it'll do is when you pull up and ready to fill uh, for your herbicide, is you'll be able to type in how many gallons you need and then when you're ready for it to pump in there you'll be able to push start and one of these three pumps or all three of them together will start pumping and counting down the amount of herbicide you need in and this will all go in in line to the water or fertilizer that's going into the sprayer and automatically fill it without you having to handle each individual hose and hopefully that'll make our load time a lot more efficient and more accurate um, when filling up. And one of the things we liked about this is just basically the, uh, the, the price of it. We got turned on to it by our neighbor. Um, he was uh, gonna probably get one of these as well. Uh, we just kind of been looking for solutions. Some of them get pretty pricey, but I mean, they are worth it. And you know, it's something each operation has got to evaluate, but the effectiveness and, and the speed of them will just help out, especially with herbicide prices keeping keeping on going up. So that's what this is. It's kind of partially, my brother John was putting it together, or I kind of started, he took over. We actually had some uh, boxes show up a little later than, or actually we were missing two boxes and the other two showed up yesterday. So we should be able to finish it in here and then figure out how we want to mount it on our tender sprayer sprayer tender trailer when it when it gets in here so that'll be something to kind of look forward to coming up with some more parts but it's it's fairly straightforward they have a youtube video so it, it's got to be easy so we didn't get much for moisture but we're getting all the wind today trash day on tuesday is around here and uh well everybody's trash can is empty now and they are all over the place so since it's not a very pleasant day out i'll just Get some road time in here and head to a TNL pivot place because I got to pick up some pivot parts for my brother, well, and all of us collectively, but uh, mainly for Tom to put on his pivot. in the pickup that's what i really don't like about those things so for those of you new to the channel or just haven't heard me explain this before or are new to farming and just curious what this is but this is called a um we call them a three-point mounted planner or a mounted planner or an integral planner um, are some of the different names for it we have reasons why we run these because a lot of the conventional planners are pull type they kind of fold in the middle open up like this set them down and go which we used to have one uh, a while back, but we've gone back to mainly exclusive these type of planters. We've always had to have a mounted planter in our operation because where we live, we have gravity irrigation and that's where you lay out pipe along one end of the field and you gotta water down the rows. Well, on that 
those ends that you have to lay out that pipe on, you can't plant end rows because you have to be able to ridge and pull right out to the field and then water uh, goes down those rows. So it's nice to have a tight buckled planter so you can pull out as far as you can and not have leave a lot of gap because you can't plant end rows. And so that's why these have been popular in our area. We've always had these, like I said. And then uh, a while back we did get a 24 row planter and then we started strip tilling and we we went back to these exclusively in 2018, 17, 18. And the reason why is we started strip tilling and we we're always having, we actually started strip tilling in 2011. Um, so we, we've dealt with it for quite a while. But when we had strip till, we'd strip till with a 12 row machine and then we'd try to come back in with that 24 row machine, which worked well to an extent, but we always had a few issues in the steep hills of that um, planter being able to follow that row. And we've tried, we tried steerable hitches and, and a few different things um, with that. It's just, once we went back to these mounted and mount, you know, going with a, a 12 row down a 12 row uh, strip till, it just worked a lot better in our opinion. Uh, in the hills, now it's easier to do on flat ground. Everything's always easier to do on flat ground. But. So we went back to these and this year we went to 16 row and we hopefully got a 16 row strip tiller coming back in, which is a little different. Stay tuned for that. No, that's why we like these mounted planters is just for our operations. What we do in a minimum till situation, it's easier to control this in a little bit more precise way in hills than with a pull type. So hopefully that explains it. And I'll be explaining it kind of over and over sometimes as we go through here. So for those of you who did hear it this time, hopefully you allow me to explain it again because it is one of the questions I do get asked quite a bit. So we can look forward to that. But uh, today it's windy. I think I'll wrap this up now, however long this makes this video. We'll catch you guys later. See you in the next one.